Let your old pal Brian Von Vier set a little tone for you. You wake up one day with the abilities of your D&D character, you know, the one that you played last. What kind of madness ensues? Leave it down in the comments below. <laughs> eh, my last character was a battle master fighter, so I'm suddenly pretty badass at fighting. I'm in shit-hot physical condition. Seriously, a panther is only dex 15, a brown bear is only strength 19, so what's strength 20, dex 16 look like on a human? And I know how to use every weapon made before the invention of firearms. Between that and shield master, I, uh, I'm pretty much Captain America with better weapons, so that's nice. Unfortunately, I don't particularly like hurting people in reality, so most of that is going to waste, but hey, I'm in supernaturally good shape, so I'd probably take up an athletic career, maybe professional weightlifting? Not nearly as exciting as it might have been with a caster, but c'est la vie. I got a Pathfinder character, but whatever, those systems are highly interrelated and have had a lot of inbreeding. Also, Pathfinder is superior, fight me on that. The last Pathfinder game I played was with a low-level character in 2nd edition Pathfinder, an L2 gnome cleric of Nethius. Their name was... Philibrig Sindesnap. 18 wisdom and 16 charisma, but he's not much of a fighter in hand-to-hand. -hand. As a cloistered cleric, he is a caster but cannot use armor. He can cast the produced flame cantrip from his gnome ancestry. Due to the versatile font feat, he can cast either heal or harm three times per day. He can take damage from someone else, using a focus point of course, but it will then take him 10 minutes to refocus. He can cast level 1 divine spells, and can also cast magic missile as a domain spell from the magic domain. As far as skills are concerned though, he's trained in medicine, herbalism, lore, nature, religion, diplomacy, academia lore, and arcana. Not sure a whole lot of madness ensues, but between his training in medicine and his divine healing, he'd be a useful guy to have around. The last character I played was a 7th level Circle of the Moon Druid. I'd have the ability to cure 11 people a day from the coronavirus, including myself. I'd go back to living life normally, and my friends and I would all be completely safe from the effects of the virus. I'd also be incredibly quiet about that ability because, well, if word got out that I could do that, I'd effectively be imprisoned as the president's personal cure for everything for the rest of my life. Be me, player in a GURPS game. Be my character. Madeline Matoan, semi-skilled epifencer. Main supernatural power is similar to chronergy. Can merge timelines to ensure a dodge or a strike. Can futz with the initiative order basically at will. TLDR, Madeline is a combat save scummer. I wake up with Madeline's powers. My face when I realize I can mess people up with multiverse theory. In my current campaign, I'm a 4-2 Grave Cleric Ranger. After the existential crises of suddenly knowing objectively that gods exist and that most of them, including mine, are assholes, what I'd probably be doing is loading up on ritual spells, memorizing lesser restoration, and getting my pointer finger ready before heading to the nearest ICU. Because I can cast Spare the Dying, which stabilizes living things once every six seconds while I'm doing my damnedest to either cure people of COVID or helping the doctors and nurses do the same with guidance, bless, and so forth. Madness, you say? Oh, I've got madness aplenty! Just tonight, I was playing my level 8 Lurker in the Deep Warlock, UA, with two levels of aberrant sorcerer, UA, whose patron is Cthulhu. And his name is, wait for it, Lovecraft. Yes, I made HP Lovecraft as a warlock in D&D. When he died in our world, Cthulhu called him into service in the fantasy realms of D&D. There has been much madness indeed. <laughs> so you can only imagine what it might be like in the real world. I awaken as Maru Doja, a Vidalcan artificer battlesmith. 
Maru is a mercenary veteran of at least two centuries and has been fighting since his late teens. He's also a master scholar, well-versed in arcane lore and history, and he's already an accomplished smith. But I don't think Maru would fit in civilized society. He's exceptionally racist, callous, distant, and very self-serving. He also favors always having work, so he'd live in hotspots like the Middle East or Africa, where there is always some conflict for him to sell his skills. He would probably be on several watch lists and may or may not have done some work for the CIA and KGB, contracting out to whoever was paying more. I would not enjoy being Maru except every Sunday for only a few hours, after which I get to continue being myself. Not D&D, but a custom TTRPG with custom classes and abilities. Note, despite the absurdity of the system, the campaign is pretty balanced. Don't worry. My character is a sharpshooter. At current level, I have advantage on ranged attacks and the ability to impose a negative 2 AC disadvantage on any target if I'm using a ranged weapon. Over the course of the campaign, my character has picked up multiple other abilities. I can only use two of the following abilities at one time. I gain the ability to summon a small army of Oni, one to three Oni at a time. I can grow four extra arms for heavy lifting or multiple weapons. Clothes will change to compensate. I have the ability to infuse my attacks with energy to be stronger. I can basically become Man Bat from DC Comics. I can fly and if I suck blood, I can heal a small amount. I can become a larger shrimp ancestor that can walk and climb on land like a spider. I wake up. I see I have six arms, current active ability. Immediately, I think that I could have a workout for three times the effort. I disable the ability and walk outside. I transform into the man bat and fly high. I realize I can fly to work. No more need for gas money as there's no need for a new car. I immediately enroll in a gun training course and learn how to properly handle a firearm and gain a license. I buy four pistols with drum mags, one rifle, and a shotgun. I apply to become a bodyguard. Oni would help to increase protection. Become a Mandalorian instead. No need for a jetpack with wings. Plus, extra arms allow for extra weapon suppression. Profit, baby, profit. Iris Majusis. Nomadic tiefling druid who commands mainly ice and some fire. I would try to live life knowing I know pyromancy, which is awesome, cryomancy, which is also awesome, and obsidiomancy, fire plus ice equals obsidian. I can also wild shape into animals and I am resistant to cold weather. All awesome. I would play with animals, have some fun creating skating rinks, maybe create statues of myself, and of course, train with my new abilities constantly. I would also maybe go to Antarctica to explore that place in person. I would also just run along the sea with an ice sheet as a platform, yeah, you know, just because. And with these powers, I would try my best to solve problems not with violence, but with words and actions. I'd also have to be more conscious of my actions as they could have real consequences now. My character is... Ferious Steel. Cat Faunus, a race of humans with various animal traits. Only one trait per character. I chose cat ears for this boy because, you know, the lols. <laughs> well, due to ruby settings, semblance hijinks, I'm immune to taking damage from heat-based sources like fire. I can also shoot fire from my hands and possibly mouth. So, what madness happens is very likely bound to be caused from things catching fire more or less at random around me. I'd become a wild magic sorcerer. Oh, oh, oh yes! There'd be chaos! At the moment, this character is level 5, and if I get spells too, I get fireball. I get to point at things and they explode! Kaboom! I'd also have several other cool spells too, like Message, Wither, and Bloom, Scorching Ray, and Chaos Bolt. Okay, so now I'm my homebrew monk subclass. I'm able to antagonize people into attacking me, dodge, then kick or punch them really hard. I'm also now a contortionist, an expert in all formal and ballroom dances, and can apparently survive explosions by just sorta jumping in place. 
I don't know, evasion was never given a good explanation. I can jump super high or far too, I have multiple personalities, and I can sense magic around me pretty well, which is, you know, kind of useless typically. Oh, and last thing, I can turn into a were deer. <laughs> that last little bit's a little bit creepy. A real interesting question, craziest things that would ensue. He could create unique water magic. The best of these is the Rain of Mercy. It could heal all ailments of anyone that is hit by the rain while allowing anyone to come to term with their lives. Though Paradox Shift would be a bit insane, it allows you to call upon another you from any point in time without causing a temporal paradox. Lastly, he was the proud owner of the Dragon God of the Endless Sea, who could create a barrier that makes you invincible while you're inside it. Eh, nothing too crazy, my cat is bigger now and I can teleport twice a day. Alright, He-Man. The only change to my daily routine would be spending more time writing since I would only need four hours of sleep. Do I end up living as long as an elf? Well, that would be weird, but I don't think it would change much. I end up with the abilities of Dr. Gideon Octavius Fastius, a man of medical expertise, wisdom, and unrelenting madness! I have an undead warlock's pact with a now dead wife, a vampiress, and a death cleric's faith in gods thought to be long forgotten. I can heal those in need, cause sickness or pain in the deserving, and call upon the dead themselves to help me in daily life or in battle. However, this also means I have to avenge my dead wife, kill four criminal business partners, and create the elixir of immortality. Twice. In the D&D campaign my friends and I are currently playing, I'm playing as an autonome sorcerer. But let's just say I've done a little tinkering. This particular autonome sorcerer is a runic sorcerer based around time magic and all that cool stuff. It was a really fun idea. He wanted to learn how to reverse time and bring people back rather than just necromancy. This campaign being more long term, I've had the chance to ask the DM, since I can tinker, can I attach magic items to myself? Oh, the answer was yes. <laughs> this is gonna be good. So now this little guy has a wand of wonder attached to his arm, a clockwork amulet in the back of his hand, tinkerer's tools in his fingers, a camera in his eye for dark vision, wrist blades, and an entire small clockwork wyvern on his back. And by the way, there's more on the way, but those are the main ones. If I become him right now, you can bet my friends would have the weirdest encounters where I would mess with them so much, being a robot now and having control over time, I think I would specifically win the lottery or scare someone really bad with these abilities. Ah, oh, that's a lot of power right there. My last played TTRPG character is a level 15 aberrant mind sorcerer. Assuming I only have the abilities and none of the magic items, we are looking at someone who can, without anyone noticing, do the following. Do note that I have changed out some psionic spells as described in the feature. Read minds, detect thoughts, deal damage directly to people's brains, Tasha's mind whisper, modify memories as per the spell modify memory, speak to people telepathically, telepathic speech, Lift up to 1,000 pound objects, telekinesis. Summon an aberrant spirit that can be a star spawn, beholderkin, or slad. Change reality around my own body, revelation in the flesh. Additionally, I have access to a lot of not so subtle abilities, including most importantly, teleport. Not to mention hold, monster, synaptic static, crown of stars, and summon draconic spirit. In short, there are a lot of uh, very high-powered abilities I would now have access to, some of which would be downright devious to use. I'd definitely be able to make use of a lot of the subtler psionic spells though, mostly modify memory after using detect thoughts for instance. Hi everybody, Brian Von VA checking in after the vid. Please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, ring that bell, and let us know. Let's say you wake up one day with the abilities of your D&D character that you've played last. What kind of madness ensues there? Love you all. See you next time. Bye for now.